Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another Donkeys and Demos. Today we're going to dive back into the MIDI Drums Made Simple series uh, with Volume 5. It is a Monday. The kid is drinking coffee. It's a Monday-sized cup of coffee. And as always, it is Dunks. That is the, uh, the Dunkin' Turbo. Fantastic. Anyway, so today what we're going to take a look at is um, routing uh, a stereo drum track um, to multiple outs, right? So basically uh, in... Um, Easy Drummer 2 and Steven Slate Drums, those are the two uh, drum softwares that we'll be looking at today. Um, you have an option of selecting a single stereo uh, channel for all of your drums, or you can bust them out to individual channels. Um, and that was something that was really, uh, it was a challenge for me to get figured out when I first started uh, doing a home recording. Uh, was I, I'd see people that were using Slate, and I was using Slate at the time mostly, um, that had all their drums bust out into individual channels, and they were throwing compression on and doing sidechain compression and reverb and buses and all this stuff. And I'm like, man, I, I want to do that, and I just couldn't figure it out. Um, watched a bunch of videos, still didn't make any sense, and then, uh, I don't know, just one day it clicked. So I figured I would go through it, um, and maybe I'll explain it in a way that will be of benefit to you guys. I hope it is. Um, will be working in Logic because that's my, my DAW of choice. Um, but the process is the same for any DAW that you'd be working in. Um, quick recap, uh, for those of you that are jumping into this series late, um, volume one, we looked at taking MIDI drums out of a Guitar Pro tab or out of a MIDI file that you can download online. Volume two, we looked at how to humanize those drums in Logic, um, but I know Reaper and Pro Tools, they all have something similar. Uh, humanizing, what it does is it, it, when you bring a MIDI drum loop in or a file in, um, every hit is kind of snapped to a grid on the uh, MIDI editor or piano roll, some people call it. Um, and humanizing just allows you to set variants to have hits fall either slightly off uh, before or after, you know, that, 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 um, range so if, if you're set to 16th notes or 8th notes what have you um, some drummers are a little tend to be ahead of the beat some are behind the beat um, so this just builds in a little bit of that and makes it feel a little bit more realistic while keeping it in time um, and then we looked at the velocities of each of those drum hits um, when you import the MIDI files uh, they all come in I think at a, a velocity of 80 so on on MIDI there's a range of 1 to 127 one being the lowest possible attack, 127 being the highest possible attack, and if you're using a drum software worth its salt, it's not just uh, a volume thing, right? They didn't take a single hit and reduce the volume. It's actually how hard those things are hit, so the sounds change, right? A velocity of 30 on a snare drum and a velocity of 127, night and day different as well they should be. So we looked at some uh, some average ranges on where to set kick drums, snares, hi-hats, those kind of things. Um, so then in volume three, we looked at creating beats from scratch, um, doing basic kind of rock beats and fills, and then we kind of pieced um, some, we, we looked, made variances of those beats, so uh, it was sounded like the drummer mixed it up a little bit, and then we saw how to rearrange those patterns to make a song structure. Uh, volume four, we took existing MIDI loops from a company called Groove Monkey. Uh, they sell uh, drum loops. They also have uh, free ones available for you to check out. Um, and we looked at how you can edit those to suit your project better, right? So maybe uh, a drum beat overall is pretty close to what you hear in your head or something that you're trying to recreate, but you've got to adjust the kick drums or the hi-hats or those kind of things. We looked at how how really the existing MIDI loops are just kind of, uh, uh, you get to, to be a total free-for-all. You can make them do whatever you want, but at least um, like on the Groove Monkey ones, they're not super quantized and they're played by a drummer on a V-Drum kit. So the velocities are already kind of set. Um, they're not super uh, rigid feeling in their quantization. Quantiz quantization, I guess that's the word. Um, so it, you're already saving yourself some time uh, editing with those. So again, today we're going to look at routing drums into individual channels to get prepped for mixing. So let's dive in. Of course, we're in Logic. Um, as you can see, let's, let's uh, you know, let's start over. I'm going to make a new project. Whenever I open up a new Logic project, it's always set to ask me what kind of track I want to op uh, start with first. I always go with software instrument, that is my drums. Um, and when I record, I do drums first, then bass, then guitars, then vocals. You guys can do whatever you like, that's what I do. So in Easy Drummer, it's set for stereo, and this is just the you know simple setting to go ahead and get started. Um, when you look in Easy Drums, or Easy Drummer rather, they already preload this uh, modern basic kit 
you can probably set up whatever you want for it to load. I don't know, but this is whenever I load it. It goes here. Um, if you look in the mixer, you can see you have your kick, snare, hats, what have you. Um, all the, the levels are set. The panning is set. You know, kick and snare centered. Hi hats a little bit to the left, and then these are all stereo panned. Um, you've got uh, your room and ambience mics. You've got a reverb here that's set up. You can you know blend that in and out. Um, and if you want to, I made a little MIDI file here that we'll use for the purposes of our video. Um, so if you listen. If you look at the mixer, everything is coming to this single channel right here. Okay. Um, so what you want to do is, uh, and this is fine, you could totally just use Easy Rummer like this, start recording, get your ideas down, and, and come back and do all the routing later. Um, but I, I, gen I generally just start with separating them all out. So to do that with Easy Drummer, you go through here and you change this to multi output and that will give you the ability to add 16 auxiliary channels that are all fed through this main one here um, now when uh, you notice that there's this plus and minus down here that was not there when we were running just a stereo track right um, so we're going to that multi output and then we're going to pick a kit um, and like I said I think in volumes one and two um, for Easy Drummer, since it comes with this modern basic or this modern kit and this vintage kit, we'll just stick with those for the demo purposes. Um, if you go down to the original mix, uh, you can see here all the mics for the kick drum are summed to one channel, same with the snare. If you go into the original mix, you'll see now you've got multiple, right? So these are all the, the channels that all the aux channels that we want to uh, build out based off of how many mics are here. Uh, a couple things I don't use are these last four. I don't do any additional percussion or tambourine. I mean, I make punk rock or I make death metal. That's what I record. Um, so I don't. I'm, I'm not using any of this stuff. Um, so we'll just focus on these. Uh, everything south of this one shot. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We need nine channels total um, to cover all of these. This is always going to count as one. So you hit this little plus sign you know, just click on it eight more times one two three four five six seven eight now you've got nine channels that can correspond to these drums here then you want to go ahead and label them at least i do kick in kick out the jams Okay, we got one too many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, that's a problem. There we go, see? Even the kid makes mistakes every now and again. So now we've got our channels created, we've got them labeled. Let's go ahead and listen again. Oh no, they're still only coming through here because you now have to set these outs on the channels in Easy Drummer to match the ins on these channels, right? So we want to make sure you have to tell Logic what it's what it's supposed to be seeing. Um, so you can actually just go and set these all one through nine because we know we labeled them and created them as we should. It should be five, stupid. The Ocho. Now, when we look at it, now we're in business. So, what you're seeing here sometimes where the snare bottom is getting signal is the bleed that's set up in here. Um, if you turn the snare bleed uh, or the ambient bleeds down, it wouldn't pick up in here, but we're actually looking for all those to be picked up in that snare bottom. I don't know why that's what, um, I shouldn't say we're looking for it, that's what they set up in from TuneTrack. 
Um, so now you can go ahead and uh, play the track and you could solo out the kick drum. You can hear this, this uh, outer mic is just adding a little bit of lower and thump to the overall kick. Then you could, you know, go in here and add an EQ if you wanted to. So then you would start adding all of your equalization, your compression, all that stuff. So that's how you do an easy drummer. Um, one of the, uh, the cool things when you're um, using some of these other kits, so when you get into the easy X's, it's so like made of metal. Um, if you load a kit there, you can see again, all this stuff is kind of summed down to a single track. So, sorry. But if you go to that original mix, now you see, look at all these mics that they've got available to you. Um, so then you would really just um, have to create the additional amount of, of channels that you need, right? So if you looked, you know, like I said, we don't use these four, so anything south of one shot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we know we had nine here. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, haha. <laughs> ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So we can actually go back through and uh, relabel these, reset our outs on here, and now you've got, you know, control over all of those. So that's how you do it in uh, in uh, Easy Drummer. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we do it in uh, Stevens Late Drums, which is you know effectively about the same way. In Stevens Late Drums, excuse me, you still want to go ahead and, and, and uh, check that multi output, um, but with Slate, it gives you eight stereo, eight mono. If I'm perfectly honest, I don't know if that's a problem or not, but what I uh, do with the Steven Slate drums as I do that summing that you saw on the presets in Easy Drummer. I do that myself. Um, so I'll sum all the kick drum mics to one channel, all the snare mics to one channel. Yeah, you get a little less control and you have to bounce back and forth a little bit, but I don't know. I would just feel weird about having some of these in stereo and some of these in mono. Maybe it's not a big deal and someone that knows more about this than me will chime in and tell me, hey, dude, you're an idiot. doesn't matter. But for now, anyway. So we're going to go here. It's going to wipe out all of these aux channels we made, which is fine because we don't want them in there anyway. Um, with Steven Slate drums, they don't automatically preload a kit like uh, TuneTrack does. So you've got to go through and um, on the construct kit. Uh, I like the Metal 5. We can do that one. Um, side note, as these are loading, you can see these percentages going. I have found in the past that if I start tapping on any of this stuff without letting all the samples load, Sometimes they won't finish loading, and I've got to quit out of Logic and back in. I don't know if that's some buggy with my computer or a bug in uh, Slate Drums, but best to just let them load. With the Tune Track stuff, you can start playing loops as it's loading, and they'll just, you know, in real time add samples in. Um, but anyway, so now you've got your Slate Kit loaded, um, and what I, through the magic of uh, the interweb, I went ahead and made a slate version of this MIDI track because, uh, as I mentioned in volume one, it was either one or two, that uh, the drum mappings are different. Um, so a, a loop that might work just fine in uh, an Easy Drummer that you create using Easy Drummer, if you try to switch over to slate drums, um, some of their toms are mapped to different keys, some of the symbols are mapped to different keys. So you just gotta move things around and you'll, you'll know it when you, uh, start playing a MIDI file and something just sounds like it's missing. So make sure I got everything. Cool. So um, so yeah, we've set multi out, so that's good. I'm not a total idiot. So now when we go under the, um, the mixer, 
you can look and see um, what they've got set up for the Steven Slate one. So there's two for the kick, three for the snare, uh, individual ones for all the toms, um, the ride china and splash. Uh, that's kind of different on some of the tune, most of the tune track kits. Um, these aren't separated out. Your china splash crashes are all kind of covered in the rooms and overhead mics. Um, so here you know the the I like the ride being out um, and the hats me or, or the china and splash being separate. It's kind of cool. Um, but either way, either way it doesn't make the uh, doesn't not make the show go. But like I said, so you got one through eight that are stereo channels, and then you've got these ones that are mono. So we're going to go ahead make eight uh, channels total. So we're going to do this seven times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to label our channels, kicks, snare, tom, toms, hats. I think it's ride China Splash. Yeah, ride China Splash. And then I'll call this overheads, and that's the um, the room and the overheads together. Now when we go but start playing our. Ah, but guess what? We didn't do the routing again. So let's go ahead and do that. Kicks are both one, snares are two, and this is what I'm talking about. Huh? I'm summing these down to one channel. Toms are all three. Hats will be four, ride five, six, seven, eight, and eight. And there we are. So something I want to mention on both Easy Drummer and um, Steven Slate drums, or any any drum software that you're using, the mixer in the software itself, this mixer, or the mixer in uh, Easy Drummer, this is your zero point for your faders here, right? So if the, whatever wherever your your faders are set in here equals, you know, I, I've just brought the snare down equals zero here. Um, if you boost your levels in, on this mixer in your DAW, it's not going to do anything here. Um, so if you find you still want more snare than you're getting out of this fader, which I don't know why you would, you would come into this mixer and bring up the snare mics. Um, or if you wanted more of the snare bottom that you were able to get out of here, you'd have to crank it up in here. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Um, the same would apply if you were, like I said, if you were in um, Easy Drummer in this mixer, these are your starting points. These here are your zero here. Um, so I hope that's not confusing for you guys. Um, also, on some of the kits, um, I think like, okay, no it didn't. If, if you decide to start with one of the presets, which you, you absolutely can do, you could start with a preset um, that has compression and reverb on it. Um, you can see there's a fader for the compression and reverb, so you can kind of blend those in. That's okay too, but you might be double or triple compressing it if you add compressor here. So anyway, that is how we uh, take our drums and route them out to individual uh, channels on your mixer in your DAW. Um, I hope that's of help. Uh, <laughs> whatever, drink coffee. Uh, stay tuned for volume six, it'll be cool. Thank you.